All right, what's going on guys? This is Rob and we are back with Deceased War of the Undead Gods Part 2, the second part of the final chapter of the DC story. As always, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys check out the playlist down in the description so you can get caught up. So here's the thing. In the last video, we basically talked about how, in effect, the anti-life virus, which is sort of a stand-in for a zombie virus to a degree, that it had basically been cured, right? And the efforts of the superheroes, or at least what's left of the superheroes, was to travel across the universe and cure pretty much any of the places that have been infected, but they don't know that like Darkseid is back, right? He's still infected with the anti-life virus and so on and so forth. So one of the things that happens, right? This initially focuses on Scott Free and Big Barda, right? Mr. Miracle. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, these guys are what are called new gods. So the reality here is that these folks are wildly powerful. Something to know about when it comes to new gods is they are all on, in some way, equivalent to like Superman, Wonder Woman, those guys in terms of power they're all hugely powerful right they're not exactly equal and it kind of varies depending on one person to the next but like scott free for example can break out of any prison no matter what it is anywhere in the universe and big barda well she's just big and she's badass right that's basically what that is but the idea behind this is that they had a son and when the initial virus went off their son was basically taken to new genesis which is the home of the new gods in order to basically keep him safe right what better place to keep him away from the entire apocalypse than a place that can only be access by those with godly powers and a place that is a home to godly beings that are easily able to overcome virtually any force within the realm of DC Comics. And so as a result of that, once they end up getting back there, one of the things that we saw in the last video, right at the end of the last video, was the story of Supergirl, who was just now being introduced to the story. Remember, like the whole idea of DC takes place in an alternate reality. And so what we found out with Supergirl is unlike the main DC universe where her origin sees her arriving on Earth, instead she arrived on New Genesis. Not only that, Apocalypse had attacked New Genesis and basically turned virtually everybody there into one of his anti-life forces, right? Kind of like a, a zombie, so to speak. And so as soon as Supergirl arrived, she was immediately attacked and converted. And so once Scott Free and Big Barda arrive here, not realizing what's going on, they immediately find that New Genesis has fallen, right? The new gods have basically fallen. They don't really know exactly what's going on. They just know that things are really bad, but their immediate concern is to look for their son. And then no Noticing a dark portal off to the side, Big Barda initially goes to enter and is stopped by the Black Racer. Now, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with the Black Racer in DC Comics, it's one of the many allegories of death in DC that the Black Racer is just kind of this personification of the Grim Reaper to a degree. He's really the most popular version of the Grim Reaper, but different personifications or aspects of death exist out there. But by and large, whenever the Black Racer appears, it is a being that simply cannot be outran with the exception of like Barry Allen the Flash. And like that's it. And the result of this is that when it comes to the Black Racer showing up here, it actually rescues Big Barda. Now, the reason why this matters is because the Black Racer, despite the fact that it is the Grim Reaper, it can be killed. If you are powerful enough, you can destroy the Black Racer. The reason why this matters is because with the fall of New Genesis, the Black Racer is just one of the survivors. And literally, it tells them Darkseid is back. Darkseid is the unliving god. Darkseid is the one who is controlling the entirety of all these forces with the anti-life virus, he attacked New Genesis, he's bolstering his army, and it's going to spread across the entirety of the universe unless we can find some way to stop it. And so the first thing that Darkseid does, right, after destroying New Genesis and taking it over, bolstering his army with the power of the new gods, the first main world that exists out there in the universe that doesn't belong to any of the gods, the first one they attack is Karuger. Now, for those of you guys who are familiar with DC Comics, bear with me here for a second. For those of you guys who aren't, Karuger is the home planet of Thal Sinestro. So Thal Sinestro is arguably one of the most powerful Green Lanterns to have ever existed. He ultimately ended up becoming kind of a dictator of his own homeworld. Instead of protecting Karuger and that sector, he actually just kind of became this ruler that, that literally controlled it with an iron fist. And because he betrayed the charter of the Green Lanterns, he was ultimately exiled from the Green Lantern Corps and then formed his own corps called the Sinestro Corps in that where the Green Lantern Corps feeds on willpower, right? How much gumption, how much strength do you have to overcome the odds? that the Sinestro Corps is empowered by fear. How scared are you? And the result of this is that Karuger falls instantly. I mean, these guys never had a chance. Like, it's not even Sinestro or those guys who are here. It's basically just the planetary defense of Karuger. But these guys don't stand a chance against the power of, of new gods. It's like an army of supermen just descending on this world. There's nothing they can do. They never had a chance to begin with. But fortunately for them, an SOS gets shot out into space and Thal Sinestro overhears it, right? Now, he's currently the ruler of Warworld.
world in the main dc universe uh war world is actually ruled by somebody else that basically turns it into like a giant tournament world a giant battle world where all people do is just fight to the death but with thal sinestro ruling it this is where his sinestro core resides so we can largely assume the reason behind the sinestro core's existence is the same here in dc as it is in the main dc universe but the the reality here and really what he basically declares is like we are going to go save my homeworld Karuger. now under any normal circumstance the sinestro core would never do this and if they did they would arrive there to feed on the fear of that world in order to bolster their own power and that would largely be it right these are this is not a humanitarian peacekeeping force they don't do things because it's the right thing to do that's the green lantern core <laughs> right the sinestro core just exists to bolster its own power and so what we end up doing is that while they respond we switch over to superman and we switch over to basically some of the superheroes on earth because remember brainiac had come along now brainiac is wildly powerful brainiac's hugely capable and brainiac fell before the power of dark side and this is really just dc showing us how far gone dark side is and the level of power that dark side possesses because the on-running theme here is that with dark side being possessed by the anti-life virus then in a lot of ways dark side's not even in control of his own faculties he's more part of a hive mind if you want to call it that than anything else but he's just kind of the leader so to speak right he's kind of the the one that sort of marshals everything and leads everything and so it's a cool scenario because in this case you have literally the superheroes who are here outside of superman who are like why would we trust brainiac this guy's a bad guy this guy literally travels across the universe he basically captures entire cities and then shrinks them down for his own personal collection countless beings have died because of the actions of brainiac why would we trust him and the reality here is the enemy of my enemy is my friend that's literally what it boils down to that that dark side is the main focus here right dark side is the main bad guy here and in times of desperation this is what it leads to that what you have are the forces of dark side spreading across the universe like a plague and it cannot be easily stopped that even somebody like brainiac as powerful as he is fell before the power of dark side something to keep in mind brainiac is a challenge for superman on a good day this is the this is the kind of being that we're looking at here falling before dark side in that capacity shows us just how dire things really are and so the result of this is okay like this is the alliance that we're making we're allying ourselves with brainiac and not only that we're reaching out to every single being across the universe that has not fallen before the power of dark side and they're going we're all going to become allies even if they've just been mortal enemies over the years even if all they've ever tried to do is destroy us at the end of the day saving the universe is more important than these stupid petty squabbles that we have with these various villains that exist out there because the unifying factor that we all share is we want to live and that's a very powerful motivator <laughs> and so what this does is it switches back directly over to thal sinestro and this is a really really cool moment because thal sinestro literally taking the power of war world that his intention is not to destroy the entirety of karuger but instead to basically start firing on those who are possessed by the anti-life and destroy them the problem here is the attack is stopped by the arrival of saronic natu and kyle rayner now kyle rayner being here is one of the cooler things right in dc comics hal jordan was like the most popular Green Lantern for years and years and years and then eventually DC killed him off and they replaced him with Kyle Rayner who arguably was equally if not more popular but he was the main Green Lantern for about a decade all throughout pretty much the mid to late 1990s and the early 2000s until Hal Jordan was eventually brought back as the Green Lantern by Jeff Johns. Saronic Natu is the daughter of Thal Sinestro. Now in the main DC universe like Kyle Rayner and Saronic Natu kind of had an on again off again relationship until the Robert Venditti run of Green Lantern when they basically became enemies <laughs> and there was no love lost there right she hated kyle rayner because kyle rayner basically ended up having to destroy their future son and because that was the case things just kind of parted ways here in this universe they're married which is really cool to actually see that their relationship worked out but they don't understand the full totality of the situation as far as they're concerned thal sinestro is up to his old tricks and attacking karuger again now the funny thing about this is thal sinestro himself being so arrogant and so full of hubris doesn't bother bother to explain what it is that he's actually doing it's just one of those things where he's like i know better than you two stay out of my way right i have a bigger mission here the problem is that their conversation is immediately interrupted by the arrival of supergirl and the reality here is remember the anti-life virus operates with what's basically a hive mind and seeing that thal sinestro had war world at his disposal that war world is powerful enough to destroy the entirety of karuger if it needs to and certainly obliterate most of those new gods who exist on karuger itself and are in the process of conflict.
conquering it. And so because the mother boxes serve as much of a transportation device as they do the ability to transfer the virus to somebody else, Supergirl literally takes a mother box and smashes it into War World. And because it is a technological planet, it's overtaken by the anti-life virus. What this does is it literally turns War World from just this controllable object into one that works on behalf of the anti-life virus and can now literally go through the universe and just start spewing the anti-life virus onto everybody or just annihilating entire worlds, right? Imagine those of you guys coming from Marvel Comics, imagine that Galactus was infected with this anti-life virus. And that's more or less what you're looking at here in terms of destruction on a planetary level and the ability to spread that destruction over a rapid amount of time. And so with Kyle Rayner being knocked out, with Arkillo, who's really one of the more popular members of the Sinestro Corps being destroyed, it really just comes down to Thal Sinestro and Saronic Natu. The problem with this is Darkseid makes his move and Darkseid emerges onto the scene. Now, initially, and the way that we're told is like you have Sinestro and you have his daughter, basically a Yellow Lantern and a Green Lantern fighting side by side and there is equilibrium. And in fact, they're an even match for the power of, of Darkseid and his Omega Beams and they're actually holding him off. The problem is what little equilibrium existed here is immediately nullified when Supergirl goes back on the offense and literally gives the upper hand to Darkseid. And when that happens, Darkseid immediately seizes Thal Sinestro. And in these dying moments, and probably what's just one of the greatest moments of Thal Sinestro, God, it's, man, it's, it's phenomenal, dude. Let me, the, the way this ends is amazing. So in one of these, like, like these, these kind of dying moments of Sinestro, he literally tells Saronic, you have to run, right? You have to get out of here. You have to live so that you can free Karuger. You have to find allies, people who can fight on our side and people who can ensure the survival of the universe. Only you can protect this world. And in that moment, as soon as he's done saying that, Darkseid kills Sinestro by ripping his head off. And literally all that can happen here, Kyle Wainer's just like, we have to go. We can't stay here. If we stay, we die. Like this guy killed Sinestro. Sinestro is more powerful than we are. There's no way we can overcome this force. And so with Kyle Rayner and Saronic Natu doing the only thing they can do, which is to just flee for their lives and then try to find some measure of allies that exist out there, most likely Superman and the, the existing Justice League, that what this does is it switches back to Darkseid. And with Thal Sinestro having died, as you guys know, when a lantern dies, as long as the ring is not destroyed, it searches for a new replacement. And that's exactly what the ring does, right? Ring status report, Sinestro 1 deceased. Scan for replacement sentient initiated, scan for replacement, and then it immediately goes to dark side. And it's like, you have the ability to instill great fear. Welcome to the Sinestro Corps. And dark side officially becomes a yellow lantern. With that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. I told you this thing was legit. Thank you all for watching. And I will catch you all later. Peace.